In this episode, we're talking big flashes, small portable drives, and much more. Stick around. Hello, everybody. Uh, hello, hello, Art. There you go. Uh, today, we're doing Let's Build uh, Talk uh, Episode 7. So, uh, we reached uh, 7, exactly. And we, as always, have a lot of uh, subjects to cover. So, uh, let's start. We have, uh, we're going to start with some uh, products. But before this, I, I want to discuss... Uh, something that we're going to do next. So basically, after this lens bit talk, we're going to take probably a, quite a long hiatus. Uh, I think uh, we're traveling to IBC, the expo in Amsterdam, uh, basically a video, a broadcast, and uh, cinema expo. Uh, it's every year in uh, September, and uh, we're going to interview quite a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. uh, last year we shot almost 30 videos, so that was uh, uh, quite a lot. And uh, this year, uh, hopefully, we're going to do more or less the same in terms of uh, videos. Uh, we're already talking to Sony to do a sit-down interview with them, mm -hmm. just like we did last year. If you have some uh, interesting questions for Sony about their recent products, uh, let us know. Uh, Black we, Magic as well, yeah. Uh, Black Magic uh, for Da Vinci, exactly, and uh, quite a few others. Uh, so I don't know if you have any products uh, specifically that you want us to uh, uh, to go and look uh, look at or talk to the to the company, and, and you know that they are there because not all companies are there this year, sadly. Mm -hmm. uh, then let us know uh, in the comments, and uh, we'll do our best to to accommodate. Obviously, it's going to be a tight schedule, so. Yeah, lots uh, to see. <laughs> lots to see, exactly. So uh, that's uh, from IBC. Uh, the the um, you know the consequence of us going is that Lensville Talk is going to be away for at least I guess a month or something like that um, because we're going to get back with about thirty videos to edit. I mean. We we're probably going to edit some videos at the show, but a lot of them are going up as we're there. Yeah. But then, yeah, it's just a. A long line of videos to, yeah. to publish. So I'm guessing that Lens with Talk will get back uh, somewhere around October, mid October, something like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm flying to uh, uh, away to some vacation somewhere at uh, either September undisclosed location. Undisclosed <laughs> location sometime uh, between September and October. So yeah, that that will be uh, on as well. So uh, we'll probably see you in, uh, in a few weeks after this video. Almost. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, let's let's start talking about some stuff that we have here on the table. So uh, these are products that we got for review. Again, all of these reviews are coming uh, in a, in a few weeks after uh, after IBC. Uh, so the first one, it's a little bit big. So uh, this is something that we got from Godox, and I don't know how much you can see. It's kind of long. Uh, it's called ADS two hundred. That's the name. And uh, you want to say what this is? It's a big flash. <laughs> it's it's uh, an yeah. accessory for the AD200 Godox flash, the the small uh, rectangular one. Uh, you know how it, it has different accessories you can pop on the yeah. bare bulb and then the, the, the round head. So you just take that part off and then connect this one and it has a kind of a short um, yeah. Uh, cable and then it's handheld. I'm not sure we haven't looked at it yet actually. It's a rod-like device uh, which connects with the cable to the flash and then basically you can pop a flash which has a very unique uh, shape. Yeah, it's we like, need to do some it's not a point. Speed. It's not a point light, it's a it's a tube light I but in a flash. Think, exactly. I would think we talked about this I think la in the last episode, uh, the the form the tube light format or format yeah, whatever. The tube light um, experience is the it, it gives off a whole lot more light for for the size, right? Yeah. So from a, a round head, the difference between a, a rectangular head head and a round head, right? The, there's a massive difference there. So this is supposed to give off a whole lot more light, cover more area, so it's for like full body shots maybe. Um, the question is... I was trying to think about product photography and how I can use this for... I know, I need, I need to test it. Honestly, I, I know... Yes. If, if there is a video from Godox showing you know people using this, I put it on a screen to see... I'm not sure if there is, I didn't look uh, yet, but if there is, it's interesting to me to see 
what the aim of this is, like what they were thinking about the uh, use case. Yeah, exactly. But uh, that will be interesting. Uh, so that's one. Uh, the second product that we got, uh, I think a week or two ago, is another uh, wireless microphone. Yeah. And this one is from Ulanzi. Uh, and everybody's making them. You know, it's everybody's making yeah, them. Yeah, it's this one is called AM18 Umic Wireless Pro yeah. or something. Uh, and what this says on the box, uh, it has built-in storage. 100 meter range, uh, stereo, and secure odor tra tracks. So basically that's that's the main features I'm guessing. Uh, I think that the biggest feature is the price. This is supposed to be like, I think less than a hundred dollars, I'm not sure. Um, but that's supposed to be pretty like inexpensive. So I don't know if it's the same level because you know how like we have we talked about the holly hollyland uh, lark lark max yeah they also have the lark which was like their first uh, version which is like for uh for for, you, for the phone yeah so i'm not sure if this one's supposed to be like a low level at least just the first impression out of the box uh, the 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 materials the design it, it's a lot simpler than all the other ones that we've yeah seen. okay for a hundred bucks uh, you would expect it but you know, it has uh, it has its audience. You know, there are people who just want. If the audio is good, then you know there are people who will buy it. You know, it's Absolutely. inexpensive, and you know why not? Uh, there there are some interesting like areas or or uh, categories where you see more and more companies go into. So mics is one of them, and lights is the other one. It's like really surprising right. to to see more and more companies go into it. And, and lens the, manufacturers making audio that like how do you even start? Yeah. With, it's not even the same like manufacturing process. Uh, it, it's my it's, guess. I I have to be honest here. My guess is I'm not, I'm not talking about Ulanzi here. I'm talking in general. My guess is that there are a, a few companies in China that mm. like main factories which know how to make either lights or audio or maybe a few other things and companies come up with their own design they you know give it to those companies and they make what you know it's not like a specific company like uh, you're saying a lens company is starting to make exactly. a full line of uh, of uh, lighting or whatever basically they're they're working with a third party like manufacturer mm -hmm. They have their own brand. Some of them can be very good. I'm not saying it's bad. No, I think they're all uh, up to now. All of the ones that I've looked at or we worked with were at least uh, really good, good enough. Yeah, yeah, that's that's cool. You know, I'm, I'm but at this level, I'm looking for innovation. So in, in this case, I think the innovation is maybe not technological, but just the price point. Yeah. You know, if you have something which is good enough for a price point of a hundred less than a hundred dollars. That's interesting. There's a whole market for that. Yeah, for sure. And uh, the last product uh, that we physically have here is uh, how, how do you? I, I'm not. I'm never sure how to pronounce it. It's X C X C X S N X S N. Okay, okay. Um, they're a really nice company that we have been uh, working with. We tested their uh, CF Express Type A cards. Right. Uh, so they they they're and the card reader as well. And the card reader, yeah, yeah, right. And uh, this is basically put this to this uh, lens in here uh, so this is a 20 uh, gig uh, portable SSD now there are a lot of those on the market but what's special about this which is called Gecko uh, I love the, the branding it's like uh, uh, it's Gecko. Gecko it's a Gecko <laughs> exactly uh, so what's special about this is that this is as, at least as far as I know this is like a water resistant IP67 and 5 year warranty so these are like things that you've seen in, in other SSDs. But what's special about this is this has a quarter inch, uh, actually I think either two or like more than one uh, connector and it right. comes with a quick release. Now for Sony users, at least for now, this is not really usable because Sony doesn't uh, allow you to connect uh, right to, uh, 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 yeah, to write to an SSD, which is really a shame. Uh, Sony, Sony, yeah, <laughs> come up with something. Uh, but for other brands like uh, Panasonic, I think, and uh, what uh, Blackmagic as yeah, well, for sure. and wh who else? Canon? No, I don't think so. Uh, but yeah. Canon users, Comet. 
Yeah, I know. But uh, at least some other brands, you can definitely do that. And then you can put it on a cage uh, very easily and it won't twist because this is like a, a quick release with two uh, uh, connectors. So that's interesting. Um, I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm waiting for something similar to this. Uh, let's put it this way. Uh, I'm waiting for um, basically a, a power brick similar to this one in, in like a form factor, yeah. but with a 3816 or like yeah, some kind know, of a a, a, a attachment built into the, uh, the power brick. So far, I'm not aware of any. If you are, again, let us in the comments. So this is everything that we have in terms of like products that we have here on the table. And let, now let's start talking about the, pro, the actual like subjects that we have uh, for uh, this video. So the first one is really, really strange. Uh, yeah. This is something that a YouTuber, uh, like a very, uh, he's uh, into like DIY and experimenting with all sorts of stuff. Is he's pretty hardcore. <laughs> really, yeah. Uh, he's, he's a serious person. And uh, he's either an engineer or a scientist, I'm guessing, you know, or both. For, by, by, oh yeah, by, by training. Uh, so he did this um, DIY video, how would you call it? Uh, experimental. Experimental yeah. video, where he basically took, uh, he did two things. He took, um, he, he created a way, he, he didn't develop this. This is something that he saw, I think, way back on what BBC in the 60s or something, 70s, yeah, Seven, yeah, yeah something. an old video uh, on how you can uh, use uh, the leaves of plants to actually, uh, as, as a film to expose the, the image on, like, how would you describe yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's at the same time a film, as if like the old school film cameras, but it, is, but it also like, it's not a negative. It's it's a positive on the leaf, and it, it, that the image stays on the leaf. So basically, it's uh, it transfers. He uses templates. You print out a template, and then he played with the grayscale, and um, and even and you put it on a leaf, like a a, a living plant, basically. Yeah. So you don't cut it out of the the, the plant, and you use the photosynthesis, uh, I think, of the plant. To actually, you expose it to the sun directly. And basically, the plant leaf, see where it sees light, it, the the photosynthesis photos, photosynthesis uh, works, and where it sees the a darker shaded area, it doesn't. So it basically that that's the contrast that it creates, yeah. and then it just and you create it creates an image, and then you develop it. Then there's a chemical process where there's the starches in the in the in the leaf are modified by boiling and stuff. No, it's, 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 it's a complicated, it's a complicated process. Don't think that you can do it in home like this. Right. And, and you need all sorts of like uh, component uh, material, not materials, uh, liquids yeah. that not all of them are that easy to, to get around. Yeah, like only find. The science lab. Yeah. No, I'm not sure. Maybe you can, but, uh, I don't, you need, you need to have, I would guess that if you have like experience developing like film in the old days, right. maybe this will talk to you. I was never into like uh, film. Were you? I did it. I oh, really? did it. My my dad did it. He taught me, and it was too messy of a process for me. I, I never, never liked. I it. didn't start shooting until this digital. Like, digital yeah, exactly like me. Yeah. I was like, ah, I don't know about all this. My father used to shoot uh, analog because that was what was existing in the day. And I was never interested in that until, you know, uh, digital came to... I was yeah. like, well, now we're talking. You yeah. can see what's going on. No, but if you're interested in that sort of thing, go and watch that video. It's very interesting. It's complicated, <laughs> but it's interesting. And, and he did something else. Afterwards, he had this... Uh, he built this gigantic lens sort of thing. And I didn't even understand how it worked. Did, did, you, did you watch it's that part? Basically, yeah. It's basically a very fast lens. It's a huge front element. Um, it's like a... I guess, Zero yeah, point something. Point, yeah, seven, point five, point something. I know. Uh, um, aperture. So he basically takes a photo and then for... Instead of a sensor or a, a film, he uses a leaf in the lens. He focuses basically using that gigantic uh, lens the light into the, the leaf and then what and it takes a photo of, of his old uh, pickup truck yeah and 
and if it was successful, it, it transferred onto the league. Yeah, the 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 quality. I mean, the well, resolution. Course, is, yeah, yeah, the yeah. resolution. There's so many issues. It's not the perfect medium for yeah uh, to transfer <laughs> onto, but it is. I mean, I could see him making it a thing and selling it to galleries for lots of money. I'm not exactly sure how what will happen to the leaf because remember, it's a it's a living thing. The moment you start pouring all sorts of liquids no, into it. No, of course you have to cut it off the plant when you process it and then he actually freeze dries it oh, to okay. make sure that the like the the shrinkage and all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, it will somehow stay... Yeah, and flattens it out so you can actually see what's going on on the... Yeah. Uh, on, in the yeah, it, it's, an art, it's an experimental slash artistic kind of thing. Yeah. But, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's if, really if you're into these sort of things, go and watch the video. You know, he did, he did a very interesting one. Absolutely. Uh, so that's that. Let's go into some something a little bit more uh, traditional or... Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, more Tamar practical. <laughs> more practical, yeah. And so uh, we have a Tamron uh, 7250 f4 um, lens for email in development. Right, it's uh, announced. Yeah, so again, I'm not sure. Always when we have lenses in development, we're, I'm not sure how much information they're actually giving us because Tamron and, and other companies are not usually that when it's announced fully, then you know what it is. Mm -hmm. But and then development announcement, you always get only just a few things. So in this case, uh, do they have a 70 to 50 f4? I don't think so. No, no. They, they have something. Did they have something? Similar? Usually, it's like a 17 to 30, 16 to 35, like the, the or Sony 72. Lens. But they, there is a 70 to something, 17 to something. Thing. Um, then the, for DSLR, they had the 15 to 35, which was right. a very interesting lens, big but very interesting. And I don't remember which 17 to something there is, but. Okay, regardless. So this is like a slower lens. I'm guessing it's it's smaller. I don't know. Did they say something about the size? I don't remember seeing anything yeah. about the size. Okay. So do we know anything about else about this? Very little. Okay. So we just have to wait until it will be announced. But at least you know it's coming. So <laughs> that's uh, that's the 72 f uh, 250 f4. Uh, getting back to Godox, uh, we sh we saw we showed you this and the AD S200 and they have a new product uh, called F actually two products uh, the FH50 by and FH50R it's basically flat panels we talked about the got the, the the yeah. professional big ones like the high end ones uh, which are I, mean, I, I don't know if to call them cheap or not because they're not really cheap but relatively to you know other yeah, brands yeah. are they're not that expensive but this one is much smaller. It's I think a fifty watt, uh, something like that. Yeah. Watt it's, lead. It, it's a square or a rectangle. Uh, it's, it looks, it looks square. square like yeah. A, smaller than a foot. A square yeah. foot, like thirty cent. Twenty eight by twenty eight something. Now, like what's kind of a little bit strange to me. I don't know what you think about this. It, it comes with a frame, like mm -hmm. a rigid frame. Now, it would make sense, I think, for the for the bigger ones, obviously. Uh, but for this one, I mean, isn't the whole idea to have like something flexible? I mean, well, it is flexible. It, it yeah. flexes. It's either a flat panel. Yeah. Or it flexes in concave to wrap the the but line around. But then you you want to be able to use the frame, right? You can well, use no, the. It looks. I'm not sure. If no, the the thing itself is obviously. It's know, mounted on. Like you can use it either on. I don't know if you would put on the camera. Um, but somewhere close to the, for like product photography or like a, a vlogging situation, you would have it somewhere like a close proximity. Yeah, so up. maybe on top of, of something like a, like over the camera on to on the camera. It's pretty light. It's a it's a mat. Nah, I'm thinking I would put it on the camera. But it's yeah, it would be it's pretty yeah. difficult to maneuver. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, so it has some kind of a mount, and, yeah. or you can just put it on a tripod next to the thing or next to your face. Um, and then it either um, flexes in, so it's like a, a concave, like a half circle in or a half circle out. Maybe more than, like it kind of wraps into a cylinder type thing. With the, with the frame? Yeah, I'm not sure. I guess it's like just a, a bendable frame on the back. Okay. And I need, I'll, I'll show you, there is a video about this, yeah, so I'll show it on the screen. 
Okay. So you can kind of modify the light or use it as a practical. So like if it blows, it's closed up into a cylinder or whatever, half a cylinder, um, then you can just have it in the background. So it's, it's separate LEDs all around the, the mat. So it can create a pretty cool effect in the background. It's RGB, you can uh, flatten it out, use it for yeah. a soft, uh, kind of soft I guess, yeah. light uh, on like a vlogging setup. So it's kind of, uh, kind of practical and maneuverable. And okay. Uh, so it's, it's uh, again, it, it comes in two versions, a bipolar and a daylight, uh, 50, 50 watts as far as we can, you know, what's the thing. Uh, Luminar, this this is a software thing. Luminar and Neo is uh, coming up with a new light uh, feature. Did you see yeah, that? I'm not sure I understand. I'm I'm thinking if I remember correctly, it's uh, you know, what they show there. It, they showed okay. You have uh, it's an AI software, yeah. so it uses AI to figure out what the subject is, what the background is, and then it has Luminar in general, right? So um, it gives you options to modify your um, your image, so you want like sky replacement or like it, no, no, but uh, the, the right, specific no, uh, but I'm saying I'm getting to it. Yeah, because because it knows where the face is, this specific feature will only put light on the face. So, but you can modify. It's not just like a a light source. You can modify it in stripes or it's in spots. It's in clouds. You can modify the intensity of it, the mm -hmm. location of it. So it's kind of like using. Um, it's interesting, actually. I mean, you can use it like um, artistically, or I don't know, like it creatively. Would, exactly. So it's for creative lighting, but to have it, um, it, it's it's okay. It's fine. I wouldn't mind it. It's, I wouldn't mind yeah. having it, but it's. I don't think it's like a, a go-to feature for. Definitely for not your whole set of. Uh, for like you have a photo shoot and like you put it every single no picture. no of course not but in a creative lighting situation where you can have some like uh, this is probably uh, just another of the new features that they're adding to the software yeah. so yeah so it's, it's fine I mean you would yeah. use that kind of uh, thing I mean it's like the uh, what do you call it the new Godox uh, projector yeah and you can have the gobos in there. It's kind of like that, but it's it's AI. Yeah, one thing that I don't remember if they showed or I, I saw a person doing like a. It, it's a feature. It's, a, it's an upcoming feature, so it's not it's not yeah. ready yet. But uh, I don't know if you show this if you can actually do this on the background, which is I think. Yes, that's one. Ah, thing, you can. That's one thing they talked about because again the the software knows what the background is. Okay. So and you can actually have multiple layers in the image, like a Photoshop type situation. That's actually pretty cool because if you can. So uh, then you can also only throw that on the background. That's that cool. is, is. That's useful. More. So it's instead of you actually using a gobo in the in the in the shoot, you right. can. Um, so this is the Lumina Neuro upcoming light feature. Uh, so the next uh, product that uh, we want to talk about is the OWC uh, Jupiter Mini and NAS. Uh, so OWC, as far as I know, don't have, uh, I don't think so, I didn't see any NAS uh, products until now. I know they have a lot of products. So. Sure, yeah, I don't remember seeing them. Yeah. This and one looks great though. This one, this one looks a like a very high end NAS. Uh, it's basically, um, a, it's a 10 gig uh, uh, connection. But it's it, it's like a very uh, I think it's 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 a family or, or a specific one I don't know did you see from the video it looks like they're making them different sizes like for a deck and for a, yeah uh, like for a like tabletop. a rack mount uh, thing oh, and uh, yeah exactly um, and tabletop and tabletop uh, version yeah it's it's a very high end product it's quite expensive but uh, it looks uh, yeah. I mean, a great accessory in any desk yeah if, if you need. Uh, we actually uh, just uh, installed a, a QNAP uh, um, NAS uh, at our home studio. Uh, <laughs> and as always, there is always issues with these sort of things. The NAS itself were fine. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't have any issue with the NAS, at least not, not so far, but uh, we did have issues with, uh, with uh, drives. Uh, we had the, the four Toshiba drives that we ordered from uh, B&H and one of them was DOA. And these sort of things happen with all drives, like either Seagate or mm. Digital or Toshiba, or you name it. Uh, it's it's just you know part of the game. But mm. 
The problem is that if you want to do a specific RAID, which you need at least four drives, for example, and one of them is DOA, then you need to wait until you know you return it, get a new one, and you know all that uh, sort of thing. But uh, anyway, so that's the the OWC. Uh, we'll show some uh, of the features on the screen. Uh, I think they had the they had a video, right? They have a yeah. Well, the video I watched was more of a like a presentation oh, talking okay. about the quality control and the, I mean it's OWC. It's, it's yeah. It's supposed to be really very quality. Um, I don't. I didn't see them talking a lot about the functionality, but it's supposed to be like really easy to set up and uh, as one, far as like the actual usage and control and, and setup. One thing that I didn't really care for. I mean, it it really depends on your you know what you think about this whole thing. But uh, the um, the OWC um, uh, dock, not dock, the um, uh, hard drive, a four bay. Uh, Enclosure. enclosure that we uh, reviewed uh, a while back, it it was also it it, hit, it did have a RAID built in, yeah. and, and you could choose it, but it's a software RAID. Now, mm -hmm. honestly, I usually prefer hardware RAID because hardware RAID is, I know it's like, it, it's in the in it's in the device itself. You can take it anywhere you want, and you don't have to install any software for it, and. I know it's 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 uh, for me. I think it's a it's a better solution. I'm not sure about this. If this is a software raid or hardware raid, so I would think for the price and yeah, but maybe it's their made. thing. I know I'll, I'll try and look uh, for for uh, a reference if they have any information about this. Uh, so that's the OWC uh, Jupiter Mini. Uh, Myops uh, mm. has a phone accessory. Yeah, uh, I really like that one. Uh, remind me what what it's, was this? It's a clip-on uh, grip for a phone. I think iPhone. I'm not sure. Yeah. If Android as well. Oh yeah, I remember. And it's, then you can actually I don't know if it's magnetic, but you can turn it uh, vertically. Yeah. And then, so it's basically you, you have a way better control, and it has like uh, actual camera style buttons where it dials back and front. And uh, the, the shutter release button, and then it's, it's quite back. big, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's pretty hefty. I mean, it's, it's a full yeah. size grip, uh, it's full size, but it, it's a it's a sizable grip, and it um, I, it looks like it comes with their own software because you can. Uh, so you can what program can, the bottoms or something? Yeah, ah, the or software for the camera. I mean, for the grip. Oh. So you can actually use. So uh, I mean, it's. You control the ISO so like on a regular camera. You yeah. control the, each each dial and each button is pre-programmed to some. I don't know if you can customize the the pro the, the buttons, but it looks like I mean you wouldn't be able to just connect that uh, connect it to a camera and use the software that's in. I mean, you assume that you can customize it. I mean, uh, yeah. iPhone is so restricted. Uh, no, but exactly. then Android you you would. Sure. That's what I'm saying. Like if it doesn't from what they're showing, and it's a Kickstarter. Oh. Right? So what they're showing in the video is them manipulating the program or the, the software, the camera settings. You wouldn't be able to do that on the iPhone. Yeah. I mean, there's very limited things that you can do. Yeah. But I think it's, there's been grips, but more like yeah. just an, as an accessory. Like We actually, grip. I think in the, in the past, in the one of the previous uh, Lensbit talks, I've shown a, a Migo accessory that does a, uh, was supposed to do or did something similar in the past, but I don't know what happened to it. the company itself uh, closed, or I don't know what happened to the brand. But uh, mm. yeah, but those things, those are interesting, you know. If it, that's the thing with Kickstarter, you never know if it's actually gonna do yeah. what they're showing. It looks really good from just the presentation. I think it's it, it would make. I mean, there's a big crowd of people that would use. Yeah, it. for sure. Uh, of course, it's a uh, it's, it's big heavy. Yeah, accessory. it's something that you need to take. It's not something that you're going to right. Bring it's, in your not just, it's, it's not like a pop on thing where you just have it on uh, all the time. But you know, you if you do a lot of phone photography or video, I think it's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, that's that. Zipon, I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, it looks like weapon, but with a Z. Yeah, Z. and they have a new uh, multi axis motorized slider. We actually didn't talk about sliders, I think, until now in, in Lensbit Talk. 
No, because there is not a lot of innovation in this field. I mean, yeah. there is every couple of years, but not too much. Uh, yeah, and it's like I have yet to see a slider that's flawless. Yeah, I agree. And that's exactly what a slider is for to give you flawless movement. Um, Sometimes, e even in this video, the, what the um, what was that in the, in the previous talk that we talked about the. A me a media department. Media? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, media division. Media division. Uh, yeah. Where he did a review of the Lawa pro new problems, problems and then he he's showing uh, demo videos with a slider and it's shaking. I'm going. Yeah. Even they don't have a good slider yeah. because it's just it's like the end. I mean, if you cut between the 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 stops. You can get some fluid, uh, nice fluid motion. No, but. if you cut between the stops and you sometimes add a bit of stabilization in post, then exactly. it's sort of okay. But you still have to have the buttresses on the side, like these extension tubes to, to connect the ends. It's it's a very, uh, it's a cumbersome setup. And then it's not always the best uh, fluid. I'm motion. thinking that the bigger, like in with other things, the bigger the slider is, the more robust it is, the more stable. Usually, that's why we use it. rails, not we, but in the yeah. industry, right? That's yeah. why it's rails, and everything's heavy, and everything's smooth. Yeah. yeah, you know, you put it, you make it into a tabletop version, and you lose all that. Yeah, that's true. so. I hope, I hope, Zeppelin, <laughs> weapon, Zeppelin, Zeppelin. I hope you guys make a great one. It looks nice. It's a belt drive, from what I can tell. And it has multi-access, so they, they have like... A, That's interesting. If it's a whole... Uh, from what it looks like... Yeah, it's we, a, it's we have seen system. those from quite a few other companies. Yeah. I mean, uh, Edelkron has... Well, Edelkron have all sorts of other things which are more like uh, uh, complex mm -hmm. as well. But I, I've seen some, I think. Uh, Monfrotto uh, with their SIRP uh, have this uh, version which uh, uses like different axes and they have a few of them uh, going around but uh, I don't know it's um, it's 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 an interesting thing uh, so that's the Zepon Zepon whatever uh, axis uh, series uh, slider motor mm -hmm. slider and newer has this um, Kind of strange looking, how do you call it? The Q4 400 watts uh, TTL flash. Yeah. If you see this, it's it's like the design is it like. Looks like the Molus design from the. Exactly. This is the first the thing flash. that I, I thought about. Yeah. Which. The Molus 200, right? Yes. Yeah. The Molus 200, the flat bank, the flat. Where is it? We don't have the 200. Oh, we don't. 100, yeah. <laughs> I got confused. Um, yeah, the form factor is great. I don't it's, know. It's I'm not, trying to think if it makes sense or not. Portable. It makes for a more portable unit. Okay. Because it's because it's flat. It's it's wider. It's not protruding like usually you have but for. You a light, still need to flash. carry a reflector, so. That's true. I mean, the reflector but the, is but not going to be. has the, the retractable. Oh, okay. So that's so, I mean, actually that's a that's an interesting. Let's see, yeah. Yeah. Ago. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, I've seen some reviews. Um, it's supposed to be pretty good. Yeah. Um, th the thing is that you know if, if you're buying something other than I don't know something like a, a known brand for flashes like mm -hmm. Godox or something like that. Yeah, that's the question. You don't have a full ecosystem of like other flashes, more powerful flashes. I mean, Newer is a known company, so maybe in the future they will have like more powerful, or less powerful, and and you can complete. But if you just need one or mm -hmm. like maybe two of the same power output, yeah, that, that can work. And if you need like the the different form factor to carry it. With the magma the <laughs> uh, reflector, yeah, that 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 can be nice. Um, oh, this is this is an interesting one. This is a product that I actually want to test. Uh, maybe I'll talk to Matthews. Matthews has this. Um, it, it, it's a combo kit. I think that all the different components might have existed before. Uh, it's called the Matthews Mini Boom Rolling Kit. Mm -hmm. uh, you see that? Yeah. that that's. That's a pretty nice kit. So you have like really low to the ground uh, wheels that I think they fold as well. You can, you can like close they, them. Yeah, they rotate in. You, you can close them uh, in, and then you can put basically a long uh, 
light sand pole, yeah. uh, and then uh, a pole like a horizontal pole, uh, horizontal, right? a boom, yeah. yes. a boom. Uh, and and on the boom you can use to what for lighting, for audio, for whatever you want. So it's and, and it's a very compact thing. You would need definitely like uh, sandbags or weights or or something uh, to to make it uh, like. Uh, Balance. Yeah, exactly. Because otherwise, you know, this is going to fall. Uh, because the, the 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 rolling part mm -hmm. is kind of small. I mean, which is good because you know it it doesn't take a lot of real estate in a studio or whatever you're shooting. Yeah. But you know, on the other hand, you know, if you have a boom, a boom always creates a lot of like uh, uh, front heavy. Uh, you know. Yeah, whatever you put on the end of it. Because it extends, you exactly. get kind of Yeah, so that's that's something to keep in mind. But uh, it's it's an interesting product, uh, and if we talk to Matthews and they will be willing to send us one, we'll definitely take it to it base through its bases. Um, so that's uh, the Matthews um, Wise, which is a company that I've never heard about. I'm guessing a Chinese manufacturer. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a, a new and expensive CF Express Type A cards. Uh, which is always good, you know. Uh, the market's getting fuller. Yeah, no, because initially we only had Sony, then we started seeing ProGrade and other manufacturer, Lexar and, uh, and Delkin, and yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, they and what else uh, we tested? We tested quite a few of them. And um, uh, Angel Bird came up with their version, which uh, I understand now is like out of stock for quite some time. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. if, the last time I checked and uh, so they had like the first relatively inexpensive one but still I mean it's it's one terabyte and not everybody needs a one terabyte so this one is I think half a terabyte right it, and they have they have the, two of them right they have like the pro version and then the smaller and, and, and the small no it's the pro version the small one uh, and the big version the regular one this is the they have a 50, yes. 512 uh, uh, gig and a 160 gig. Yes. Okay. Uh, and and the, do you remember the pricing? I, I think I saw the pricing. It was kind of in relative. I put it on the screen. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that, that was interesting uh, because this is what we're looking at. You know, if, if we want, like if the performance is, uh, we didn't test it, so I can't say, but if the performance is, is more or less like the other ones that we have tested, then... The pricing is, is really attractive. And again, not everybody needs a one terabyte drive. That or not drive a uh, card. Yeah. Yeah. 500 even is even five hundred overkill for a lot of uses. Yeah, yeah. Two, whatever, one, one, 200, 250 is. No, they have a 160. So 160 uh, no, is a little bit too, too small yeah, for a lot of things, especially like, for video. Probably yeah. like the next one up, but I don't know if they have it available. For sales, it's, it's, it might be enough. Oh, yeah. Uh, the question the is, with I mean, speeds are pretty much, we, we've done plenty, not plenty, we, we tested about three or four of them, and we've tested the speeds, and they're all pretty similar. Yeah. Uh, the question, I think, is reliability. I, I How do you check that? You, how, you, how can you, there, I, I'm not aware of any way uh, that we can check reliability. The only way is really to, like... <laughs> read reviews after a year and see you know what's uh you know what people are saying but even then you know there is no no good way of to actually check reliability as far as i know uh so that's that's that but that's the why that's just another option so that's mm -hmm. that's pretty cool and, and we have another product from uh, godox i should have uh, bunched them together but uh, that's the last one for this uh, it's called the godox ml projection attachment so we actually talked about the projection right. in post, but this is a project projection uh, in camera. Mm -hmm. So you tested the um, Godox ML60, right, uh, a few years back? I did. I can't remember the, the word, because they're all similar. Uh, you tested the S60, which the was S a projection. Uh, right, the, exactly. The S60 is the one that already comes with the projection. It wasn't amazing, I, I got to say. It, had, it was clunky. Yeah. And, this one looks a lot better. This one, yeah. From just the, the intro. Or the, no, the ML60 was really nice. It was, No, it the is, light itself was amazing. Yeah. It was tiny. It was the first light that, that we saw in the After, studio. Yeah, yeah. After, like, the, the humongous, I 
them. In the yeah, past. the original ones that they had in the past. Yeah, we actually was, still use the S uh, SW sixty or what's yeah, it? Something yeah, like that. the original one. But uh, um, the ammo sixty is really nice. We we the have it still nice somewhere and around it's here. Small. It comes with some really nice accessories. And now it comes with this accessory to put on uh, the projection, and the projection unit, and the, and the projection unit itself looks really good. It has gopos that that are internal. You don't have to not gopos, but like the the flags. Yeah. Are internal. They don't come out. Um, yeah. I mean, just from the first uh, look video that they. If gave. we have a chance later this year, we'll talk to Godox and maybe do a review because we still have the ML60, so no problem. Because we've tried a number of them, and the problem. Yeah. The main problem with these attachments is precision, not not having precision control, right? So oh, if yeah. you want for for small product photography, if you want to move just a, a couple of like a centimeter on yeah. the side, uh, I'll, I'll explain this. Basically, if you want to shoot like a logo of a product of a product on on a product, and you want to light just that with a sliver of light. You need to be able to very, very precisely move the the projection attachment and the light up and down, left or right, uh, you know, in, in different uh, uh, directions or ways, axis. Yeah, yeah, and and that's that's problematic. That's that's not easy. Uh, and the larger the projection unit is, the more heavier it is, the more difficult it is to like fine tune it. And, and sometimes when you lock it, it's it, it falls down a little bit and then, you know, so. So it's probably, the big ones are, are probably great for like industrial type things. So yeah, like if you're room, riding like a. Yeah, yeah. Then you don't have, you don't need that precision control. But in that for early products, use, yeah. case, yeah, for product photography or even for like portraits, yeah. You, you need precision. I think this one will be great for that. It's smaller. I, I would try and build something with like much higher degree of precision, which is similar to like a focusing rail when you have right. like a, the ability to really fine tune up, down, left, right, uh, different axes. That could be great. Um, you know, it's, it's an idea for a product. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll uh, talk to some companies about that, uh, that concept. Uh, so I think that this is everything that we have uh, for you today. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. yeah, and uh, the next time, as I said uh, in the beginning, is going to be probably after IBC, maybe quite a bit after IBC. So stay uh, tuned for those IBC yeah. videos. They're great. Lots of new stuff coming from the. Yeah, there are going to be a lot of videos from the show and after the show that we recorded during the show. So and and if you have questions uh, for Sony or for any of the other. Uh, Manufacturers that are going to be there, you can look at the IBC website and let us know. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Check out the website as well. Exactly. And we'll see you next time.